I'm gonna read this tweet. Absolutely not. Just get good. Skill issue. <laughs> but I noticed no. that you can age a five. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> play, play the other game. Yeah, yeah, I feel like this is a ridiculous topic. Chill, chill, chill. I want it to be better. Lobo scared me a little bit. With that being said, I actually like the direction that this is going in. All right, we're back. So um, thank you so much for coming on. We have two more faces to round off this amazing podcast because it, it definitely has been. Um, so we have our boy Chaotic and further FBG, further beyond gaming. Um, I'll give you guys an opportunity to quickly introduce yourselves and we'll get into um, this last former, this last segment of the podcast. So uh, I'm Chaotic. Chaotic. I'm a uh, mobile gaming content creator. I'm kind of diving into other anime games too, but for most part, known for mobile anime games, just kind of showcasing new stuff coming from various different regions. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can find me on uh, YouTube, Twitter, uh, whatever else. At I am Chaotic with a zero and not as not a no. Dope. Yep, and uh, my name's Further from Further Beyond Gaming. I was actually on Rovercast episode two. It was an honor, honor to be back. Thank you guys for having me back. Uh, big into action RPGs, obviously, you know, mainly Ether Gazer at the moment, but of course, Weathering Waves. I uh, got into closed beta one, played it extensively, now in closed beta two, which I'm excited about. Been having a fantastic time. So, once again, thank you for having me back on. I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, we started each uh, segment of the Rovercast with a different, a different question. So for this particular section, I would like to ask you all. I, I the first part of the podcast, I asked like, what was everybody's favorite part from the um, beta? On this part of the podcast, I want to ask you all, what do you think is something that maybe stood out to you? Because with the nine month update that they got from the devs, they talked about just all the things that they improved, right? So if you could think of maybe one thing in particular, specifically in regards to improvements, what would you say improved to you the most, perhaps, uh, from or whether it's the most or just something that was notable to you um, from CBT1 to CBT2? I'm going to hand it over to you first, Chaotic. All right. So improvements from beta one to two. Um as much as I'm an advocate for everything being much gloomier, much darker, I have to say that after playing, I think I'm at least 30, 40 hours into this beta. Um, I have to say that I'm I, I, I like the color change. Um, it, it, I'm, I like dark. I like gloomy. Anyone who knows like the type of stories that I play, Ark Knights. Um, Aether Gazer, all this stuff. It has like a dark ambiance to it. Um, and it was really exciting to hear that they were going to be going the super dark, gloomy route. Um, but there's aspects of it that I feel were taken up a notch when they added this. Uh, I don't really even know what, what to call it because it's not just like they made everything brighter. It was um they added like a i want to call it like an anime filter because it's 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 like everything pops in this weird um help me out like it's it's like everything's more vibrant in an it anime a little bit more life to the game yeah like, like it, it doesn't like, like where it needed where they needed it basically the lighting i think plays a big role too where it's like they were able to make certain areas not that they had to like straight up like turn the saturation saturation up but by improving the lighting it kind of makes certain things glow a little bit more um the sun yeah. might shine on some blades of grass more where it used to not and so it just kind of made it look cleaner right it and it, it, it cleaner is a great word for it because um i think in of course nobody has been watching me play since the day one but there was one point where I was just walking around and I was just like, this looks good. Like it was, it was, it's, uh, has anyone made it to the roguelike section yet? Yeah. Beautiful yeah, okay. area. Oh my God. That, yeah, that was fire. Holy yeah. God. I haven't like, gotten there yet. Oh my oh God. God. Like when you, when you open that door and w first, before you even get to the door, when you're oh. walking to the no, door, uh -huh. I saw the door. It looks right. like that area. 
it's just so dark and then bright in the center. And it's just like, this is great. And and then when you walk into the door, it's just vibrant, nice pinks. Um, and, and it's toned down pinks. It's not just like, a, oh, everything's just super bright pink. It's like a, 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 a pink mixed with a, a type of purple. And it's just vibrant all the way through. And you can see the blades of grass just flowing. And it's just I'm just like, OK, hey, they got me that that's a nice I, I didn't want to say I liked it, but I, I like it. I like it. It's also the weird like scene composition of like you walking through this like subway car that's like half embedded in the ground. Like there's just this otherworldliness that you kind yep. of get when you're going through that entry zone that the first yeah. time you're walking down that. Well, actually, even the other times I've done it, too, but especially the first time you're walking down it, you're like, man, like, where am I? Like there is this great awe yeah. that you get in that moment for sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. the moment that I I walked through that 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 subway train, I think I just sat there for a moment. I was just like, God, I d- I don't I I didn't want to say that I like the brightness because we have too many bright gotcha games, but the the way that they did this specific section it stands out. Yeah, I feel like a lot of that is contributed to the fact that they they also didn't just brighten everything. It's like even in the midst of what you're going through or experiencing, it's like this one thing that is being emphasized, like the red, it was like the red grass. Cause that's what it was like catching me. I was like, wait that's a minute. The, that's, the, like, that's what I'm talking about. It's, yeah, it's, it's, that, yeah. it's not red. It's like, it's pink. It's like a pinkish. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it's like it's so good. I think yeah. the word that you said is perfect. It stands out because when everything is bright, Nothing is bright. <laughs> Shout out to the Incredibles. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. And, and so <laughs> it's like <laughs> you're no you you're, you're the go for that. You're the go for that. You're the go for that. <laughs> so in reality, yeah, it's like it's lovely that we can have this dark world, but have these just bright notes, these highlights, if you will. Um, to the world. And so, yeah, like that's that's one of the reasons why I'm happy that they stuck to their guns and they didn't just say, OK, we'll just make everything bright. It's like, no, we're going to have like it's going to be a deathly scary world, uh, apocalyptic world. But there will just be these lights in the darkness scattered throughout the map to where it's just like when I get to this part, it's going to be like, oh, it makes it more memorable. Oh, yeah. Like when you're in that like that area with like the pink Sakura tree that's also like glowing or even actually where the uh, the monkey is, where there's like that, that big like mushroom mountain that still has a lot of like good uh, color and vibrancy to it. That in juxtaposition with where the uh, that uh, the tacit discords form, like those uh, regions where all of a sudden all the color fades and everything just goes to like that gray. And again, it highlights those moments that much more when you go from that vibrancy to like that like death that loss of life that I'm like, yes, that is what that is how you use color and scene composition to add to a feel to your game. Not simply just everything looks like you vomited a pack of highlighters out all over the page. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it was a, a nice. It, I think I think the thing that made that specific area walking to the door stand out was exactly what I said. It's dark and then it's just bright and it's like you ever had you ever seen those those the um the cartoons that have the halo moments so halo moment in pretty much saying like there's just everything else around it is just gloomy and then where the halo is it's just bright yeah yeah right so yeah so it felt like that like a stage yeah 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 like when the spotlight shines on something on a stage kind of kind of but it's it's like but it's a it's a it's a pathway Oh. So if you if when you get there, you'll see it. It is it's a pathway leading to it, and like I just at the not, end of the tunnel. Yeah, like it's great. It's great. You got you have to get there. It's great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I just talk so much when I stream, and then people ask me questions, and so I'll just be like, I was like, we're still at like you need level twenty three. But one thing that actually got me was because, um, you know, like the little guidebook like completing all the stuff from the guy book helps you level up so much faster. And there was like one thing that I hadn't done. It was something like stupid, like cook twice. And because I hadn't cooked twice, I couldn't go to the next level of the guy book. And so when I got there, I started just unlocking all the stuff that I had did prior. I'm and so, so glad that that's there. I wanted, yeah. I wanted to mention <laughs> the, the detailing, the, the area they're talking about chaotic, like, 
the detailing on the doors, like the one that's like you rest in, it's like a rainbow pleasant one. And then the one that you actually go into like a fight is like a dark, like scary one, you know, mm-hmm. like it looks, you know, those little details. Like a warning. Yeah. Like, like, you know. I'm so excited now. You guys oh, are getting a, me. Dude, you have no idea. It's so amazing. It looks. Yeah. It just, there's, and, and the thing, the thing about this beta is I'm kind of in, and I'm talking great about it right now, but I'm like so 50, 50 on how I feel about this beta. It's, 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 We'll get to it. I'm pretty sure we'll we'll have a moment to talk about it. But I'm so 50 50 because it's like um, there's so many things that stand out that show great improvements. But there's so many things I'm just like, man, y'all miss y'all miss this one. OK, yeah, we'll get yeah. to that. Um, so further, what is your take from CBT one to CBT two? What's something that you feel um, stood out to you in terms of just like in terms of improvements, basically. Yeah, for me, it was uh, San Hua's tacit mark being in her eyeball and seeing <laughs> it for the first time. And then I felt like I was looking at female Itachi and I just got put in a Genjutsu. That, oh, that that's did crazy. Right. Yeah. That yeah. Was it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did you like how they like they expressed like like the reasoning behind it? Because I like that part. It was, great. It was amazing. Like, they went right so into it. Amazing. it was like, she was like, I know you notice it. Like, this is right. why it's like that. I'm like, oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. Have no, you completed the story yet? Um, I no, Christ. Uh, so I got all the way through the main story. I did Gian's today and I still have to do Ling Young's. But I did do all the like main story chapters. OK be wary because he needs to see this stuff and understand it so just be wary yeah, when we're talking yeah, about yeah. it yeah you know? right <laughs> Wait, well, honestly is to, it okay to to it's almost um expounding upon chaotics like that that was a real thing for me saying who was tacit mark being her eyeball but um honestly from cbt1 to cbt2 once again just kind of piggybacking on chaotic it, it was the uh details that kuro put into certain things so for example for me that stood out majorly was the uh, the facial expressions. I, I think they put so much more facial expressions into these characters than they did in CBT one. Um, another thing was like the simple it, it was the simple things for me, like being able to when you're running up a wall and there's a protruding thing coming out, yes. you just it, like parkour it. Bro, yeah. you don't understand. Like yeah. th- these are things if you played CBT one, you understand to CBT two, yeah. because before that little thing that stuck out was such an obstacle for you to get around and it was the most burdensome thing but now you can vault it and parkour it that that's just beautiful for me personally so it's just like i used to have little details i I used to have a little um system for that and i'm not gonna lie i felt like i was flexing when i would do it people in chat would be like oh that's so sick because what i would do is i would run up a wall backflip off the wall then dodge jump away yep. then uh pull up. obviously yep. like so much work man There's so much work yeah, yeah. So, what you do, so this is this is uh specific to cbt1 players is you would go up the wall you would backflip off of it and then you would uh dodge into it and then tether your way over it exactly tether that's how you would have to do it beforehand. One on one on how to make a player quit. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you, I, you, you just turn meta players. Jeez, you meta players. I'm over. Here, I'm over here just running the wall like a casual, and you guys just. But the thing is, is that <laughs> so flipping. But specific CBT two players don't understand what us CBT one players had to go yeah. through. That that was so that little that little difference. <laughs> But that's why I wanted to get into CBT2 because I wanted to see what those differences were between the two. And that was just one that stood out, the facial expressions and then everything Chaotic just said about the vibrancy, but the vibrancy, the way it needs to be done or the way that it should have been done. I I think they absolutely nailed it there with the glows. It's like you, you have the glows, but there's still like a dark background. So it makes the glows pop even more, if that makes sense. Um. So th- those are the things that stood out. And then, of course, like I said, San who was tacit mark in her eye was the great whoever decided to make that change. They deserve a raise. Whoever you are, you get a raise. Nah, That's real. just my two cents. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the lore awesome. behind it. The lore behind it was great too. The lore, yeah, the lore no. was fine. But dude, oh my god, like that whole concept, like I feel like that for me, like understanding like how important the tacit marks are, like it's not just like 
it's not just a mark, but it could, it's actually a symbol of it could potentially represent what their power is. Like, I, I'm kind of even wondering, like, Mortify has his just straight across his chest right mm-hmm. here. Like, yeah. what's the purpose of that? You know, like, even with like, like, it's like, what is what is that going Gian on? On the back of his on his back. Uh, um, yeah, like, um, uh, on his bro. back. Uh, dude, um, uh, yeah, we, we call him Kakarot. Why did they change his name? Hold on, yeah, time uh, out, time out. I want to talk about that. Does everybody <laughs> still call him Kakarot? Yes, yes. Yeah. I feel like that's it's such a culture name. I'm like, they Sephiroth. his name, but I'm still Sephiroth. calling that man Kakarot or Sephiroth. Yes, Sephiroth. or Sephiroth. Yeah, yeah I feel He's like a lot of it, Kakarot to me. I'm not gonna lie. I heard I, when when I heard the name uh, Kakarot, I immediately heard Toy Animation, and I immediately said, "Yep, that was probably a good decision." <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't really do anything about a name, though. No, they really can't. You yeah. would think that, but Toei be Toei be clapping stuff. So I was like, "Hey, no, no, there's, there's so many sorry. characters names Kakarot or yeah, Goku that's true. Or there's so many different animes. Because it's in the same medium. So like when it comes to video games, the name Kakarot. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's a thing where well, I don't know. Son, but, but the whole Son name Goku comes from Journey of Chinese mythology. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Goku is but yes, I but I don't think Kakarot is though. Like Son Goku is, but I don't think Kakarot oh, is. I, I you're think right. That, Kakarot I think might be specific to Dragon Ball. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's yeah. the problem. That's you're probably, right. Yeah. There's no no one's copywriting Son Goku. Yeah, that's not <laughs> possible. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but um, that's a valid point. I typed I in to, I I typed in um, Kakarot and immediately Monkey King came up. So it's Chinese mythology. Yeah, I think it is Chinese. Oh, mythology. I don't know, man. I don't know. Change it back. But I should change it back. <laughs> I do want to ask you guys a question. Then, uh, with that being said, I actually like the direction that this is going in. Let's talk about the lore. Um. So, spoiler warning: If you have not seen the CBT one story being played by a streamer come watch my stream or watch my bots um but yeah basically long story short uh check it out if you haven't seen it um we're gonna talk a little bit about the lore since um since we've gotten into this part it's just the first chapter so this is basically gonna be theory crafting to a degree um two things i want to say first thing since we're talking about the tastic uh marks i don't know if you all have noticed this and if you haven't noticed this check it out in the game at nighttime at particular types at night uh, times at night if you look in the sky, there is a tacit mark in the sky, broken like the stars. The stars make the shape of a like a tacit mark, essentially, as if it was like being broken into our reality. Can I add to that? Yeah. At night also, um, if the moon is out, mm-hmm. if you look at the moon, there's like um, these rainbow sound waves that like like are like next to it, too. It's crazy. Mm. I don't. I, I've seen the moon. Seen, you're, gonna gonna me, you're gonna make me log in right now. It's dude. crazy. <laughs> it's not, it's, so many. Yeah, you can you can change dude. the time in game to nighttime. Look in the sky, mm-hmm. and I don't know the exact time of night when it happens, but I've seen it a couple times. The cloud where sky. I was like, oh shoot, that's a tacit but mark in think, the sky right now. I think we're actually looking at a sky though, because no. remember oh. at the beginning, mm-hmm. no. The, the MC came out and it was water, so yeah. it, like, it was like that was the barrier between. Whatever you know, up that in whatever is down there. In CBT Whoa. one, it's not there anymore. But in CBT one, at where the crownless is, at least I don't believe it is. If you go to like the tacit mark where the crownless is, the entire sky turned into the ocean. Mm-hmm. It's I don't think it's there anymore though. I think it's just like scary clouds or, or dark yeah. clouds. But it used to be in CBT one. Whenever you would get on one of those like tacit mark things, the sky would turn into the ocean. Has, has anyone gone through the I, area where the wa- uh, raindrops are opposite? Yeah, I saw that. I was like, "What is Bro. this Death Stranding?" What? Yes. <laughs> so instead of where the water, that? instead of rain just falling, rain is like reversed. Going up. I don't know. I didn't know there was a whole area for it. It's, it'll start. It'll start falling down, and then there's like this moment where it, it's like an impact almost, and it shoots back up. Mm-hmm. Like it's like mm-hmm. it, it's like really weird, and it, it kind of goes into that weather change thing that they were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Because there's even areas where there's just lightning. Like you'll be walking up some stairs, and then a lightning <laughs> bolt just strikes right near you, and you're like, it's okay, a, it's a little too like, loud though. That lightning. Yeah, is yeah. It is. <laughs> where, where is that area? Because when I was doing Gian Story Quest, it was happening happening right before I walked into the domain. So um, outside of the Thunder Squamas area. Gym? It's kind of close to Squama. Yeah. Okay. So maybe I was just in the right area then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
So further, how do you feel about the story, man? Like, how do you, yeah, chaotic. You, how do you guys feel about like the the story direction? Do you feel like there's some things you guys want to change with that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, do you feel like um, do you, do you like the pacing? Like, what are you guys' thoughts on that, man? I'm gonna start off so I can just give a uh, further a nice segue. Um, <laughs> All right, I um. I skipped through more than half of the story for the simple fair. fact that it is not voiced. I, it, it isn't that it isn't it isn't. A, That's it's fair. That it's That's bad. fair. It's not that it's bad. It's just there are certain things that I, I read hours and hours of Ark Nights, bro. I feel you hours and hours of Ark Nights. Yeah, I can't be I can't be messed with when it comes to reading a story anymore. I've gotten yeah. so tired of reading stories. Yeah. So. I've skipped through more than half of it. And then the most interesting scenes I'll stop and I'll appreciate it is a tacit mark. <laughs> I just told you it. it's sick, isn't it? Yeah, I was yeah. wild. I was it's looking been... for it. And, and dude, that's sick. It's beautiful. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's so cool. So, can I, I share mean, this? Uh, hold on. No, don't do that. Well, I mean, you can share it like to us, but you wouldn't be able to do it on the podcast because yeah, it is a tastic part though. It's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, honestly though, like I feel like that's fair. So what so what part or part of the story did you end up watching that you liked then? Yeah. All right. That's a good question. So I I started paying attention because I remembered a very specific scene. Um, remember in the last test where we are climbing, um, there's like this giant musical instrument in the center. It's yes. where we met San Juan. It's where we met all this. Okay. So I was like, oh, I wonder how much they changed this. Cause I remember this part. And so I started paying attention to all that stuff. Man, they scrapped so much. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They scrapped so they much. The, the, the pacing of everything was just completely different. And, and oh, oh, and, and the fact that they start introducing these characters at the very beginning of the story. Right. Oh, Mm-hmm. It's like, OK, so you're giving us a reason to be excited for what's going on uh, for these specific characters. Um, the moment where you where you meet Scar for the first not meet him, but where you interact with Scar for the first time. Um, I sat there and I played through that. And that's where I discovered that you can skip scenes by making specific choices. I I was I was darkness for a moment, bro. I said, I, I want the smoke. I want all the smoke. I don't care about anything else that's going on here. I want to fight. And he's so like, so you chose you? to fight Scar? Yes. And he just went, he, he it took like three or four times. And then he's like, all right, you want this. Remember, you said you wanted to smoke. And then it just put me right in the domain. Some people said it just skipped ahead. But oh, um, wow. but I I don't know like what the what part I was missing. You know what I mean? Like I just kind of went straight into the combat. You missed all the village lore. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know that was that because I saw it as an option, and I was just yeah. like, so, so wait, you're two, telling there's two options? There's two, yeah. So we get. I I so, saw the, the oh, story man. one. No, yes, so I, I did so, too. So so what I did ex- exactly was I walked up to the um. To, to uh, Scar, it's after the cutscene happened, and yeah. it, he's just standing there. And I walked all the way to the um, the little orb looking monster, Echo. Tic Tac. And, mm-hmm. and then I saw at the corner, it said optional, talk to Scar. Went back and talked to him, and I saw, oh, there's an option to fight him. And I yeah. pressed it the first time, and I thought it was just going to keep on saying, you don't want this smoke, like type, type thing. I pressed it like three or four times, and he's like, all right. And then we Domain no expansion. The <laughs> yeah. Domain no expansion. <laughs> That's exactly All what he does, fun. though. But yeah, to, to, to give you like that, that's a segue for further to talk more about the story. I skipped through more than half of it simply for that. And one thing that actually makes that good for me is when the game releases, you'll be able to. Mm. I, I'm going to experience it for the first time. But I now I just got to hope the story's good. So <laughs> so let, that's that's where I'm at. So further, you can go ahead and take over for that one. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Um, for me, there's there's certain aspects of the CBT two story that I really liked, and then there's certain aspects that I wish they would have kept from the CBT one. Um, so, for example, the Crownless fight. Yeah. CBT one. I don't know if anybody's here with me, but it was for me personally way more epic and impactful. It felt like there was much more on the line. Not to mention he dogged all three of us or four of us in CBT one. CBT2, it just didn't feel as, it just didn't feel as impactful as, as CBT1. Yeah. It also it, spoke in CBT1. 
Yeah. It, it, oh yeah. It yeah. Did. But, but I not only about that, that, it kind of, for me personally, it kind of set up what you're going to expect and experience in Wuthering Waves. Like it, it kind of set the precedent of, of what you're going to encounter in this world that you're getting into. And, and that fight kind of set it up. And it was for me a, a lot more difficult. It was, um, it, you, you felt that sense of danger when you were fighting crownless for the first time in CBT one. Um, once again, once he like jumped us all and you're like, okay, this, this guy's not playing around CBT two. It was just kind of like he was there and then gone. And it, it just didn't leave a lasting impression on me. Um, I but what think I, I know like, why though, I think I know why. And it makes sense when okay. the way that they set up from CBT one, it made it seem like he's like this big bad guy. He's 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 the 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 focus. Right. Right. And after that scene, you just pretty much clap him a thousand times after that. But there's no like, here's this big bad guy type thing. Uh, right. cut, cutting that kind of does help the flow of the story because it makes you so excited for this thing that's never going to happen. So it yeah. makes sense. It does. Yeah I, yeah, I could see it from that perspective. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Honestly, I agree yeah. with that perspective. Personally, I do miss it. I do miss it. The the, the boxing moves, the impact frames, mm -hmm. like them speaking to us and us just being like, wait, they speak like like that whole system was amazing. But the flow. Yeah, I, I, can I, see I, where further, I can see where further is coming from with that, though, just because like and I can also see where chaotic is going, because that is also a point of my point is like what we're starting to kind of see pre be presented here is it goes back to what I was saying before. It's cultural differences. I was like, I feel like most people like in the West, we kind of like that robust, like, oh, we're getting punched in the face. Now need me in the stomach. Like, you know, like we're we kind of we kind of <laughs> like that interaction. Whereas Mascus. like when you look at the, the Eastern culture, for the most part, that was like one of the big things that they were looking at like and i tried to explain it to people that aggress aggression right so it's not the fact that it wasn't epic but they complained about the aggressive nature overall just the fact that was, yeah <laughs> like it was like you know they had to deal with the chisaya and then there was even deeper into the story on cbt1 you had awu that was still kind of making you work for that like hero complex or that respect in a sense you weren't getting that yeah. so it was it was really one of those things like I like personally, I've been like that first cut scene. I felt like that's what even set it off when we had videos going out on YouTube. Like everybody's like, nope, I got to play that. Um, and I can definitely see how that does take away because that was that uh, awe factor is what we call it. Right. So it's like, OK, yeah. I'm, I'm going to pick this up now. But I also think like that's where uh, Kuro is going to have to start making a lot of executive decisions on who exactly are they trying to target. Right. Because it's like you know, is being considerate to casuals and like certain regions with certain like decisions they make versus like those players that really are here for that super impactful, very intense experience. So it's like, it's really hard because we're just kind of caught on uh, like Kiro's in the middle and we're just on the opposing sides basically. So they have to make that decision, you know? Yeah. Like I've, I've I know I find myself like I've, I've played a lot of Dark Souls games and I, so I really like getting into like some of those like really like difficult like fights in those moments where like I find myself going into combats now, like just for fun, uh, I'll like go in solo and then I'll like hit control. So I'm just walking and I will do the entire fight only walking, just artificially <laughs> doing it creates this like epicness to it. Cause you can still dash and sprint if you need to. And then it's it's done, you go back to walking again. It is, it is. You're like artificially creating this excitement in the moment, uh, like this do du this dual, uh, environment and so like i i hope at the very least if they end up keeping a more casual direction with some of that tone and and how they like they just move over with that that there's still like the ability for things like that to like may, let me make it feel more aggressive and like that 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 conflict like that's oh, that's what i want let me say something to that though and i don't know if this is an audio glitch but oh my gosh the crownless fight in cbc2 do you all remember the crownless fight in the CBT one where when things got serious in the fight, mm -hmm. it was like the audio stopped and then it went to that hard guitar. Like it's an epic fight, man. It's gone yeah. now. And I don't know if it's an epic fight. But it's gone, and I was so disappointed. 
I was there's like, a, there was a complete de- uh, rework with the entire OST in the game, and I'm pretty sure yeah. everyone has noticed this. It went mm-hmm. straight EDM, and um, EDM is it? Well, EDM? it depends it's on the boss, it, though. It, no, like, when you get to a no. boss, it does get hype because, like, the the Inferno Rider is yeah. pure rock and roll. Yeah, it's so yeah. sick. It's, it's oh, like so pure rock and roll. good on the Inferno so, Rider. So the first time I fought him, I was going off on how <laughs> it's like the doom ost basically yeah, doom, like doom, on yep, the inferno yeah. right off yep. inferno mm-hmm. right off fight. oh my gosh but and there's the a section of the, the damn forest is sick too yeah yeah there's a section of the inferno rider though if you listen to it it's not just it's like it goes like from a edm-ish style first and then it kind of just goes into that rock and roll style yep. like it's 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 it's, it's it, there's a there's a specific thing that they're trying to do with the ost and I'm for it, but I'm worried that there's going to be a little bit of inconsistency there, right? It's, it's kind of like huh? what they did with DMC. Uh, do you remember the DMC that came out that was like made in Europe? I think it was like the it was like with Dante with short hair, and they had the group uh, Noisy. We don't call him Dante. Uh, wait, what? We don't call him Dante. What do you call him? The son we of Spider. Him, we we call him that. Uh, uh, the the. Um, Oh my God. I can't say the word. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that puny little team. <laughs> 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 I know what you're getting at, though. Like, we, like, that is not hashtag not my Dante, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm, I, I liked the game. I didn't like it being a Devil May Cry. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have like a lo fi concept to it like that's what i think about when i play the game it's like the music is like very low fi like that's how it feels to me like not literal lo-fi because i know literal lo-fi like low fidelity and all that but it's just like chill beats right like it's kind of like a very chill um that's why it's like lo-fi and chill or whatever it's like very chill music and then like i said when you get to bosses it gets kind of hardcore i will say this though now this is just what i think i don't think we have all the music i think mm-hmm. they're purposely yeah, I think we're so we're probably just hearing some generic general sounds that will be in certain parts of the game. But like, for example, right, like in Mondstadt for Genshin, there's like a different song each like just in Mondstadt alone. Like the Storm Terror's Lair has one soundtrack. The city has another one. When you go up to um, like the the little cliff where you get Venti's material drops or whatever, like there's different soundtracks depending on which part of just Mondstadt that you're in. So I feel like they probably have just like general music for the um, s- specific areas of the map. But once we actually get the official release, that'll maybe be like the music for like the first part. But then once you move around it, so just something to consider. I what I, what I was what I was getting into was actually saying that the OST is um is probably like this is probably just a beta OST. I don't yep. think I don't I don't think this is any anything near what they represent to be final because there is specific songs that if you I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed this when you're going into specific areas songs will overlap as if they're not meant to be there. Mm-hmm. And there was one time when it happened and I haven't been able to get the song to come up again. It was thick. It was yeah. like this EDM ish song that just wouldn't stop. And I, I don't know what triggered it. I don't know how I got it to start. What part of the story or the gameplay it it, it was so good. Yeah, it I was, was about to say that there's sound yeah. bites that I've been hearing like that. I'm like, I don't think this is for this. Like, I don't think this is for this area. Cause like, yeah. Um, and I noticed that one of the cool things they actually did, there's certain enemy types that get certain sound bites from certain boss songs as well, which I was like, that kind of is a cool representation of like, they're under that domain. But when you get to the one that's like basically running that domain, then you get the full experience of the song. Interesting. So yeah, like those mm-hmm. are like little details. Like I was like, just kind of like, I spent the whole day where I was just like exploring, just kind of, you know, actually farming the game. And I was just, just like wait a minute like they're kind of being super intentional with like even down to when you encounter certain echoes you're getting that like correlation there as well which i thought was pretty sick hey zox huh what's up there's a very specific song that we heard at the beginning that i'm pretty sure you took uh took notice of Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, I knew. Oh, I knew yeah. exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm about to say Connor is the one. Connor's the one who um probably noticed that thing first. Honestly, me and me like, and Connor just recently. Song? Yeah, me and yeah. Connor just met, so I don't. I didn't know like um 
how much PGR he's played. I've only just seen his videos. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, Connor's the PGR guy. Connor is the PGR guy. <laughs> the rest yeah. of the PGR I, I wanted to, the PGR I'm guy. PGR dude. I, I play way back when I really, wanna, I'm I just to, now getting back Since we're it. still on the topic of music, I wanted to ask, did anyone do the G on quest and heard the music in there? Like towards mm. the end. I don't know if you guys heard. Yeah. But man, it was, good. It, was, it was really good. I was getting the feels, man. Like I was butterflies and everything. Like yeah. that story really hit pretty hard for me. I really liked it a lot. And just further, for, you, further, man, you've been listening to the music, man. Like, like how you feel about the music, man? Yeah, exactly. Why? Oh, no, I was letting you guys do your thing. Um, <laughs> you yeah, no, too, I, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like the music. Um, I think it's I think it's good. I mean. I, for That's, boss fights, it, it, it gets. What's wrong with it, man? Come on, come on. No, come just on, be honest, bro. Yeah, I, be honest, I, bro. I, I heard that. I heard that <laughs> yeah. hesitation. I was like, yeah, no, but I would be, rather just play other music in the background and turn no, the audio to I'm, zero. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I, I think, I think the music and the OSTs, they're good. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. You yeah. know, I, I think they fit where they need to be. For example, when you're in a boss fight, you want to be amped up and hype. And I think they do that well. And when you're in the open world, they have this nice chill music. And mm -hmm. I think that's good as well. I, I, yeah, I'm being honest. I think they nailed it when it comes to the OSTs, to be honest. Would there be any other kind of music you would like to see in the game? Like, uh, like genre wise, or do you feel like the genres are like, you know, where they should be? Yeah. I mean, to be transparent, like music, I, I only notice it when I'm in boss fights. And and even then I'm like, this is a bop, but then I leave it at that. It's not like anything that I go deeper into per se. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. Okay. So for me, music is not the biggest thing in the world. It's like a secondary okay. thing. Like I'm in the fight. I'm like, hey, I'm about to take this guy out. Wait a second. That's a bop. All right, let me lock on now. So with all that being said, with like just the different things that they have added into the world, um, further, maybe you can help me out with this one. One of the things that I noticed um, and maybe most of you guys know this as well. The map changed pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of things that are not where they used to be. Like, and I, I and one of the things I noticed, particularly like it was a couple things I noticed, but the the main city looks so much better. Like, and it looked good the first time too, but like the levels to it that they added to where they basically like took advantage of all the space. And so now there's just like so much more verticality to the city. Um, just like the underground, you know, aspects of it. Like it's just, you could get lost in there and I'm personally all for that. Um, the tiger's maw, same thing. They kind of changed some things there. It, it, that the abandoned city that used to be there is not really there anymore. And they just have like this small little like section where it used to be. And it's like an exile camp again, like a similar to the one, and the um, other part of the map between Thunder Squama and Crownless. So what are your thoughts on the map? And, and you know, hopefully you've gotten through all the map, um, maybe like unlocked all the checkpoints or whatever. What are your thoughts on just this? This is just the beginning too. This is just their first, you know, they'll probably have extensions, et cetera, over time. What are your thoughts? And maybe we can hear from you further. What are you thinking about the map? Yeah, um, honestly, I, I really like it. So, when I was the first day I was streaming, when we got to the city for the first time, I remember in CBT one, I thought it looked great. Yeah. Uh, but when I got there in CBT two, I was like th the whole time I was telling my chat, I'm like, that wasn't there. That wasn't there. This is new. And it, and that I feel like I was doing that a lot um, throughout the entire stream, uh, especially in the city, because and I also think it was due to the story as well, the different pacing for it, because you did get introduced to these characters much, much quicker than you did in CBT one. Um, so you got to these areas a lot quicker. Uh, but I, I like how they changed the map and I and I like how they changed the scenery. And I think it's way more beneficial, especially for the new story, um, the things that they expanded upon and the things that they improved. Uh, I think it's been overall, in my opinion, a net positive. Um, but I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. I think it all looks great and I think they did a great job. But what do you guys think? Me personally, me, me personally, I think anything is better than that last city. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I felt I felt like I was consistently getting lost in the last one. Um, mm. there, there was specific things that I would look for going back to the town and I'd be like, wasn't it just here? 
like is it is it is it now everything is just like okay you go right and then here's all this stuff okay you go left and here's all this stuff and yeah. and and you go underground to go and get this quest and and you go upside to go and continue the story like it's it's very streamlined the last one was just so confusing it was yeah. cool it was cool from like a visual standpoint standpoint but um yeah it's it, it anything's better than the last one Anything. yeah i think I think one thing I was like, uh, cause I actually got asked out on stream, like, you know, what would I like to have seen added to that town aspect or if you're, you know, kind of exploring. And I felt like with towns, like, and it could be just the audio thing. I know that they, they said that that was in the work. Uh, but I think it's like really dope when you get closer to a town, you hear the town, like you, you know, like there's life there. So you hear people commuting, you hear, uh, you might hear the guy yelling, your order's up, you know, somebody, some random dude, like, I don't know, like whoever the guy is that makes the food there. Uh, but you know, like just kind of having those little like important like keys to detail, like it is like really, really important. I feel like just for that immersion aspect. Um, and then even when you're exploring, I know some people kind of like, there was like, I feel like the exploring aspect for the audio is fine. Like if it's just that serene, like kind of low music, you're kind of, you know, you're just in the moment. And really that's more of an opportunity for the visual to take place. But um, yeah, I felt like with the town overall, it was like definitely designed a lot better, but I really would have liked to see more of that audio aspect, uh, which I'm hoping to see in the future, like j just to kind of show like, this is where life is in the desolate areas that we kind of have around it kind of thing. I like that you know? yeah I hope I hope that's included in like some of their optimizations that's coming like you said yeah because like, I know the city is like from a like technic like a technical standpoint there was like a lot of people popping at least that I've seen on like my end mm -hmm. of like people just like appearing like during Ling Yang's like, people popping stuff. <laughs> just people but in, in particular in the city like it's just like Ling Yang's story quest it's supposed to be like you're going through like a don't, like, please no spoil like, this stuff. Okay. No, it's I'm not, not, not as like a spoiling on. Yeah, you go through a, a a busy part of the city at one point, and then like you start walking into it, and there's like text popping up of like, yeah, I love hearing and smelling all the things, and I'm like, bro, what? And then all of a sudden, just like, oh, like 15 people just appear in front of me, and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> so I hope as they optimize that a little bit more, that they also add those things that you're talking about, Zox. Because actually, yeah, I I love that too. Those little bits of immersion that just like show like the the care that they have for the world that they're building, like yeah. really goes a long way. One thing I was also going to mention too was, um, this was a question I got a lot on stream, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be the case, similar to with the music. We're hearing beta music. We're not hearing the official release music because, <clears throat> um, of course, they want that to really hit when it hits the map. I think the map that we have right now is very much a beta map as well. It's the same map we had in CBT one. I'm pretty sure when the game officially comes out, because some people are saying, oh, this map isn't really that interesting looking like the textures or whatever. Like it doesn't look as detailed as it could look so, so far, so on. And I have a feeling that that's also going to change as well. Uh, okay, I, you, you, do you disagree yeah, or people, people were no, complaining all the I'm, time I'm, about it? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back. Am I crazy? Did that ain't the same map as um yeah. the last test? It looks well, no, almost it, the same. It, it is just about the same because the thing is, there's certain things that technically were added, right? Like just in the open world. So like, yeah, the big city's not there anymore, but the areas that are the exact same still like the textures for the map still look kind of like. Like, I don't know, 480p or something like that. Like, they, they, they're not really the most, like, detailed. It's, no, it's like because the, in the in the top area of the map, I remember specifically talking about this part. In the yeah, top yeah. area of the, of the previous map, we were cut off from where what was supposed to be going into a new area. Mm -hmm. there's, that's not there anymore. Like, there's there's various aspects of the map mm -hmm. that are gone. Like, they're... No, they're yeah, they're, agreed. Okay, no, I, I agree. Saying, like, it's the same same map. I'm, I'm no, just, just like so. What I'm that. saying is there are things hundred percent. Like I said, the city's not there anymore. It's a different map. And so, uh, so what I'm talking about when you hit the M button, right? And oh, you're you talking about the, the graphics. You're talking about the you're graphics. You're talking about the yeah. Right? That's what I'm talking. That's what I was yeah, talking, yeah, okay. talking about. The graphics. Okay. Oh, okay, you okay. Hit the M button on the on your keyboard. Like, and you the, see the that shape, map. The overall shape of the map is still generally the same. I would say, right? Yeah, and the, like the, same, the textures, the colors. Like I think we're gonna get a much more um, detailed final you're version map. Uh, you're yeah, talking about map. Sorry, just sorry. I apologize. It wasn't clear. So, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. We're looking at the beta version of mm -hmm. the graphic map. 
Um, but like I said, even with that, once you get into the, that doesn't even tell the whole story. Like there is like the, you know, lighter equals higher, darker equals um, lower, right? In terms of like verticality, the, the typography, right? Um, but it's just like the verticality in this game is insane. Like when you get to an area, like even with Thunder Squama, right? Like when you're in that deep area with Thunder Squama or, or it's called Thundering Memphis now, right? Like you look up at that like cliff that comes over it. Like it's so high up there. And even other parts of that, when you're like in the, like I said, um, whether in the dim forest or what have you, like there's just so much like really high highs and very low lows to the point where just the flat map typographical map just doesn't tell the whole story. Man, I was I was so lost there for a sec when you kept saying Thundering Squama. You said that a few times now. I was like, I have no idea what man. Oh, yeah, that's his like, old name. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be, yeah, good old to be fair, there's Squama. two. There's two now. There is two. Yes. Yeah, so, Thundering yeah. Memphis Thundering and, and um, Tempest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tempest. Tempest, um, Memphis, I, and Thundering the, Memphis. But on the verticality, though, I'm assuming you guys have all gotten to like the meme that's like on top of the mountain. There's like the chair. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I heard about it. Oh my god! I, that, as soon as you said like it doesn't like acknowledge the verticality, I was just like thinking like that's where I did a did a ten pull today. We went up and sat in the chairs, and that's that's where my like pulling location <laughs> is. Gonna be if they keep that, did you win? My, did you win uh, anything? Uh, I, that's when I got Tao Chi. New luck spot. Of, you won. <laughs> then. You won. <laughs> On Gion's banner. So like Don, that's where Donjin, Mortify, and Chisha are all the rate up four stars. And I got freaking Tao Chi sitting in that chair. And I was just like, I've been blessed. I also had a guy in chat who's telling me too. There's one guy in chat. He's like, you're going to get Tao Chi on this one. Just watch. You're going to get Tao Chi. And I was like, oh, okay. Rate up. And then it happened. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Who do you know at Kuro? Kuro devs. Wit. <laughs> yeah, but the very casually though, right? Yeah, I just loved it. You're sitting above the clouds, like right at that point, like you're kind of at like the peak of the game and there's a, like just like a few things you can see, like that dragon mountain that's like sticking out. And I was just like, that thing man, got I, me. I was like, line, yo, yeah. I tried to get to it. They won't let you get to it. Like in the CBT one, you could like, you know, use Gian and, you know, the grappling hook. And you could get over to the Black Rock um, Shores area. By the way, I, ha- I don't, is that still in the game? I don't know if it's in the I haven't or not. checked. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't have Gian. So we haven't hard. gotten to it yet. I don't think. Well, no, no, no. So in CBT one, you could like it was not on the official map, but you could technically see oh, yeah, it in the yeah. distance. You could still go. Yeah, so I don't know if it's still there in CBT two or not to be able to like try to get over there too. But I did try to get to the dragon, and they won't let you. They literally like stop you like Paimon style, and they're just like you can't go here, and then teleport you away. Oh no. Don't mention that name ever again. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, got it. you got to cut that on out. You got on that subject, on the subject of like those like invisible walls and stuff, like how do you guys like feel about some of that? Like, I know I got kind of annoyed by a few areas where it like you like it totally looks like an area is explorable and then that like red circle of just like boom, like it just doesn't let you go any farther comes up like that like i don't know me personally it kind of bothers me when like things like that are in there like i can't get to set like boundaries but i just would like to see more topographical boundaries like actual like world map boundaries that just like kind of more intuit you into certain directions as opposed to just like artificial walls like i will say that that is oh, okay. one thing that was like that bothered me a little bit so you're saying like kind of like instead of there being like that wall, but like there being like a fog, like where it's like, OK, you can't go past this fog because of like, you know, th- this is cor- this is basically corrupted. And you if you breathe it and you die kind of thing, like there yeah, actually being something funny. like something that like that. Like I know there's there's there is like, well, there kind of is that with like the around the uh, Phalian Baron Gull or whatever. There's like the, mm. the poison. Yeah, yeah, that poison. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. And then there's also like that, like that hurricane area. I don't know if you guys have kind of tried to explore into that. Where I did that place. The tornado, the tornado and then it area? Kicks it. Tornado. I haven't gotten yeah. in there yet. I haven't it's gone. There. Sorry, don't, don't, don't talk about it. Don't yeah, I'm about to get too deep, please. Sorry. <laughs> um, so like, I, I. I think like those are like mechanics. Like there are like semi natural ways to like keep that. But, like for example, uh, like the Black Shores, they were like inaccessible because like there was a big body of water. So like you have to basically try and cheese your way across. You're not running into like a game design barrier that's like oh, I literally like saying. the invisible I get what you mean. wall. Yeah, I want I want the world <laughs> to reflect the boundaries, not artificial invisible walls that create those boundaries. I think the hard part for a game like Weathering Way is because they you get so much mobile mobility they kind of had to because like i said for me i was set to do the same thing with like 
using all the mobility options that they gave me to make it over to that dragon. So if they hadn't put that invisible wall, and it was in the ocean. It was a far away place in the ocean. But because you have enough stamina and you can keep using that combination of grappling hook, glider, and eventually kind of, and if you have Gian, you can grappling hook, dash, dash, glider. So like they all, at least for the water thing, they kind of had to do that because otherwise people are going to be able to do so much. If, we, if you want to do something like that and cheese it, I'm okay with there being like a turnaround mechanic or something that's there. But like there's areas at the very beginning of the game where like you're kind of going through that like cave system mm. uh, before you get to the crownless fight that if you try and like jump up, which it's like totally accessible and there's like oh, you know, a couple oh, of ledges I see what you're saying. Yeah. explorable. And then like you go to jump to it and it's just like wall. Like I was just like, oh, <laughs> like, well, just don't put the ledges there. Or like do, do something else. Agreed, like, uh, agreed. Yeah, just make it like not even capable of going there. Yeah, exactly. Like world design reflects that of then I, I'm not trying to go and jump on a ledge that looks like I should be able yep. to explore that ledge <laughs> like that. That kind of stuff. Kind of OK, me every now I, get it. I get it. Stop. Don't even put the designs out there for you to be able to see that you can gli glide or visit that area. Yeah. But yeah in, a, in a game that's like a platformer, if there's platforms there that are jumpable, don't like don't make it look like it's jumpable if it's yeah. actually not jumpable. <laughs> like put, a, oh, you know put something else there instead. <laughs> That just made me think about uh, something that I don't think we actually have talked about in any of the segments yet. Mini games. Yeah. The mini games. So, oh my further, God. Have you, have you, have you played any of these chaotic further? Like how you guys have felt about that? Cause I, I would say for me personally, it felt like we were entering different games, mm -hmm. like, like seriously. And I thought that that was the coolest thing, but how do you guys feel about that? Bro. Oh I God. I remember when I when I first jumped into one, I thought I was going into like a regular domain or something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm 2D and I'm like, what is this? Because it wasn't <laughs> in CBT one. I heard I about was, that one. I think it was a great addition that they put in there. And I'll admit I, I lost four or five times before I actually got <laughs> it down packed. But <laughs> it was I think it was smart, man. I, I, I think they are fully understanding that. There's going to be hardcore players, but there's also going to be casual players that are going to fully enjoy that experience. But not only that is casual, but it's um, it, it's completely different. Right. So you're not you're not just battling and, and, you, and you're not just catching echoes and stuff. But now you have something that is completely outside of what you've been doing. Let's say you've been exploring for two hours and fighting bosses for that amount of time as well. Yep. It's something that completely takes you away to do something that's not you know, anything of, of what the game is already in of itself. So yep. I think it was a, a and genius. That, and that 2D mechanic specifically, uh, with, the, with trying to avoid spoilers for anybody here, yeah. um, like they, they bring that back a couple times. Like it's not the right. one domain and they use it as a gimmick one time. Like they, they bring that back a couple times. And like, I hope they continue to kind of bring those moments into it. Cause like you said, it's a great way to just like break the formula up and just like give you like a different experience for at least a short little bit like that. And, and again, that's not just like a cheesy, like time filler mechanic. It's giving you a different experience and perspective to a level that I just think like again elevates the, the quality you, you of the know, product you, overall. You know what what was one of the first things that I thought about when I jumped in there and I was 2D? Like what if you had you you jumped into one and you thought you were going to be doing one of those exploration, you know, like run through type of things, but actually you jumped into a 2D fighter and then it's like you're 2D fighting the crownless. That'd be <laughs> yeah, cool. that, that would be size. Yeah, yeah. I thought about yeah. I was like, how dope would that be if all of a sudden you're in like a 2D fighter and you're fighting one of the bosses, you know, like crownless or or the bike or something and you have these uh 2d fighting mechanics all of a sudden yeah, uh, we gotta get yoku cool. back in here get a yoku <laughs> back yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah, the fighting, on the yeah. fighting. i will right. say this i will say this as much as i enjoyed that it, it it's fantastic it was it was fun to do mm. it kind of feels like and did anyone else get this feeling like they just kind of threw stuff in here to see what we would think about it yeah, yes i, I, I uh -huh. do think that, that was part of this yeah okay Yep. Because there, there's a few things where I'm just like, this is off. This is like the, the, the bike. <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. No, no life. Uh, the bike. No, no, no the, the, I know what you're talking about. You're talking a little mini game with the bike. Okay. I yeah. thought that joint was janky as all get out, bro. Like, like okay. it did not feel fun. Uh, what? No, no. What? Potential? There's a bike. There's a side game? quest. There's a side oh, quest. Oh, my God. 
it, it, it's it is a side quest. It can be done at any point in the game, but yeah. it's it's it's. And that's why you probably haven't experienced it. That you being further in, like, into the story. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if the people who did the side stuff early, I did. Already that, experienced it. Long, that joint was a long side quest. That's probably yeah. why I'm not world level, whatever y'all are at, because <laughs> I was doing that side quest. <laughs> well, my, so there's there's a few things. So there was there's a in the right before that one, there was also a mini game where you pick up these uh, giant um, uh, batteries, uh, like cubes. I, no, it's 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 it like, like a, a battery, lance. right? It's like a lance. A lance. Oh, that was fun. The, that, yeah, joint, that was dope. The, the lance joint was fun. Oh, that it's, one. It's, yeah, yeah. And then you throw them at the um at the spawning um food. Oh gosh, yeah. that was so good. So, mm-hmm. The, the video fun. work was amazing too. Yeah, that was fun. Um, but the thing that that's making me kind of like, and I guess it's not the mini games itself that's making me kind of worrisome. It's uh, are they getting a little in over their head a little bit? Because if you're throwing this much at us, right? Oh, do you enjoy doing this? Do you enjoy? Where's the quality control? Is that what you're wondering? Yeah, yeah. Like, cause, cause there are very glaring issues with just the open world itself, and uh, I, I had this issue uh, with the last beta too, with how empty the open world felt. Um, there was moments where you could literally be walking in areas, and there's nothing there. Um, there like there's 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 i don't know where their balancing is and i kind of want them to focus more on the open world aspect and differentiating that and making that better before throwing the mini games in there the mini games are fun yeah the mini games are fun but it it, for the most part the experience is the open world and the combat right make sure that's in the right place first and then get back to the extra stuff i'm 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 kind of worried about that well, while I definitely agree with you, I think, yeah, making sure those other core mechanics are definitely polished. I can see why they're doing it, kind of going back to our other conversation about, like, the casual, hardcore audience. Yeah. And I think the uh, uh, casual audiences, like, like those gimmicks. They like those mechanics as, like, little things to, again, like, break up the hardcore kind of combat. Where I think, like, yeah. by the sounds of it, I think it's the, the majority though. of us like, you, you think so? You go, go ahead and finish. Go ahead and finish. Well, I was, I was going to say, like, I think the, the I would say it sounds like from the most of us here that, like, we really enjoy the open world exploration, the, you know, seeking out and the farming, the echoes, the boss combat, like those kind of core gameplay loops, like, which are, I'll say, core to what Weathering Waves is. We all think those are good. Those should be priority and be, like, literally as best they can be before you start trying to mix other components in there. And so totally. I can totally see that and be like, absolutely. But I can also see why another player, by looking at that, be like, yeah, but I, I kind of liked the 2D side scroller part. Like that was like, I like being able to do little mini games like that. Or like, I haven't done the bike my, myself, so I can't say how janky the bike truly really was. Sounds like it was janky as heck. It was. Um, <laughs> like, I think people like when when those things kind of break up the pace a little, even though it's I may not, not like them as much. It's, it's not that I don't think they should be there. They should totally be there. It, it, it's just, it's more so I want these things that are the focus of the game to be polished in the best way that they could possibly be. And if they're going to implement this stuff, if this is going to be a part of the core game, if we're going to see these things so often, yes, 100%, we should, we, they should make sure these things are polished and, and a part of that gameplay loop. But because we've seen these things in three different story aspects, we're only going to see them in story from what I'm seeing. So they're not a focus. They're, they're not as yeah, important. As making sure the open world and the, yeah. and and the combat and and the storytelling and and all of these things, uh, even the ecosystem, I could uh, I just found this out like literally uh, hours before getting in in here. The 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 cost system, like if you have a four cost, you you get like crit damage or crit uh, uh, so, uh the higher the cost of your echo, the higher likelihood you'll get the preferred stats. It's not higher likelihood. Well, no, no, no. It, it, it is. It, no, they're capped. So four yeah. stars only have crit rate, crit damage. And yeah, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Three That's stars what I mean, yeah. are elemental damage. and maybe That's uh, well maybe thought out. Damage. That's great. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I, w- I want these things to be in their best possible position. And, yeah. and, and it's it, the reason I'm being so hard on this, right, is because, and, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, We've already played Genshin, okay? We've yep. we've already we've all already played it. If they don't do something that makes us all invested for a long time, it's going to result the same way. We're going to quit. It it doesn't matter how 
fun the combat is if there's no reason for the combat. It's not going to be there's going to be no reason for the open world if the open world isn't fleshed out. There's there's so many flaws that you're seeing that have from from a game that we've all already played. And I want this to be better. I want it to be better at yeah. it com- coming from someone who's played PGR. The first moment that you hop into the game, and this is why I'm so disappointed in the crownless fight. Um, the moment you hop in and you fight alpha, she claps your cheeks. She don't, she, she don't, she don't give you no, no, um, no remorse. You go in mm-hmm. and you take an L and that sets the tone for the rest of the game. It, it yes, it should have a bit of, casualness to it easing people into it but think about when we all played um for the people who played pgr we all fought alpha for that first time how excited we got and and how we wanted the this level of difficulty to continue from that moment forward even casual players i'm a casual i consider myself a casual player i don't meta nothing okay i don't optimize nothing so when i go into these and i see stuff like that the alpha fight and and i get destroyed at the very beginning i'm like bet Ben, yeah. this is what we're getting into. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say about the CBT yeah. one crownless and CBT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the best way I could put it is when I did CBT one crownless, I was like, "Hey yo," and yeah. then I did CBT two crownless, I was like, "Hey yo." <laughs> <laughs> it was like well, that. Yeah, <laughs> well, like, what are the for real. what are the cool? But, and that's at the precedence moving forward. I think the cool part about that too is it's beatable. Like actually like pulling on that PGR moment with alpha, Mm -hmm. you can beat alpha. It's not scripted. Like you don't actually have to lose to alpha there. If you went in and started a new account and you had the skill issue, you could beat alpha in that opening fight. Like that's why like I was, I'll admit I was a little disappointed too by the opening crownless fight because like I was hoping for a combat that like you can beat this if you're really good, but like you're probably going to lose this the first time. Like that's what I kind of wanted to have. Yeah, I, yeah, like the scripted lose, like the expected loss fights that you could potentially beat. Yeah, that would be. Cool. Yeah, and yeah. and because it gives you that that little sense of challenge as like a competitive player that you're like, no, I want to beat this. They're, I they're think expected I to really lose. The first and time time say, Screw that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, think, like, it has it one. That, sorry, go ahead further. Oh no! I was saying I, I think I almost died the first. I think I was on like fifty health or something. The first I, time uh, I did die. Was. I yeah. did die. But that's what. <laughs> but that was. That's what made you so excited to play mm-hmm. the game, right? You're like, dang, I I died or almost died. This mm-hmm. is what I'm looking for. And then CBT two, I felt like I was fighting him with pillows on my hands, bro. I'm like, mm-hmm. what is going on right now? Yeah. It was cool, but it just wasn't as cool. Yeah, I want to make a, a point, actually. Um, I wanted to, to, to one thing I want to just mention to kind of go back real quick. Um, I liked one of the mini games a lot, like in the open world. It was so if anybody here ever played this a puzzle game It's a really pub- popular puzzle game called The Witness. Anybody ever heard of it? OK, so Connor knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so it's like literally in terms of like puzzle games, it's one of the most popular puzzle games ever. Now, it's not the hardest puzzle game ever, but most times the most popular is never going to be the most hardcore. And there is this <clears throat> puzzle on PlayStation. I've seen yeah, this. It's a PlayStation Plus game. And so it's basically. It's a glorified mobile app where you're connecting. It's a, gl- yeah, it's a glorified mobile app. It's so it really is. Because they connect it with <laughs> the open world. So they're like open world puzzles. It was great. And so there's this one puzzle in whether well, ways. I hope they keep it where you like it was like a bunch of blocks like color blocks. So you basically have to connect each color block um, from both ends. Like, yeah. I like that one. Yeah. And it was, I was like, I told Chad, I was like, well, the witnesses prepared me for this. Cause me, me and my wife used to play that all the time. So I like that one, but to go further, uh, to go further. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey. Oh <my> gosh. <laughs> hey. uh, to go further to chaotic's point. Um, one of the things that I was noticing and I was like hoping maybe when you get to higher world levels, it happens, but more open. And we talked about this re- uh, in the last segment, too, so I won't make it long. Just more mobs. Can we please get more mobs in the open world? Because um, I think Connor brought up a really good point. He was basically saying um, there's less mobs, but the likelihood of getting an echo is a lot higher. 
So it's like you have less things to fight, but the things you do fight will give you more echoes. And I was kind of asking, I was like, well, what do you, would you all prefer? More mobs or a rare percent to get the echo? And I personally would prefer more mobs. Um, I know Vulcan said he also was saying like he would prefer more mobs yeah. in the open world as well. And I think we yeah. all kind of are in agreement. Like I would prefer to have more like battle instances and the open world. I was going to say from CBT one to CBT two in CBT one, when you'd be in, when you would fight the, the set chords, like the, the set fields. Yeah. The tacit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You were able to farm echo there and yeah, right. take the reward too. I was expecting mm-hmm. that going into CBT two. I'm like, Oh, like, Oh, there's, 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 um, echoes here. I, I could farm. No, you can't farm them. So it kind of feels yeah, yeah. like it was disappointing. It, yeah. I, I was like, Very. man, I'm going to kill two birds and one stone. I'm going to use, get the rewards and I'm going to get some, maybe get some echoes. Mm-hmm. Right. But, um, I actually dislike that they did that because yeah, it should go more if they just add that, then I think I would solve that problem that you're talking about. Um, I, yeah. I, had, I had a quick question as well. Oh, go ahead, Connor. <laughs> I was going to say the one thing I do want to add in there uh, that like to confirm my stand or uh, clarify my stance on that. I don't think in its current state, there should be more enemies with a decreased drop rate. I think simply okay, yeah. we should just increase the number of enemies because the, the other thing we talked about this a little bit earlier in the podcast is right now we're in the honeymoon phase. We want to explore, we want to farm these echoes and we want to make that happen. Once you start getting into the maintenance mode and you're grinding echoes out, you're trying to optimize, you're probably not going to want to clear the entire world every single time trying to get a couple of echoes. And so artificially inflating that time with decreased drop rates and more enemies, I think actually would, is going to just like hurt your experience overall and burn you out faster in that degree of farming. So mm-hmm. I would rather just more enemies populating the world with the same or like at, at the increased drop rate, because I, I, I agree there are empty parts where like, I, I like we'll get a new character or I'll get uh, a new better echo. And I've, uh, you know, oh my, just like jacked up my attack. Like, oh sweet, I wanna go test this out. I'm running around for two minutes, not seeing a single enemy. And I'm like, guys, I just want to hit something. <laughs> and, but, but, <laughs> maybe, that's what the horde mode, maybe that's what like the, the roguelike mode is for, where it's just like, if you want to go fight something, just jump in there. So maybe that's the idea. There's but. a shop in there and you could buy a specific echo, but I don't know if it gets switched out. I don't know because mm. there's only one in there. So if you accumulate a certain amount of currency from doing that mm. event, you can buy things in that shop and echoes are, are part of a, that. And also in the spiral abyss area, they have a shop currency in there too, where you could buy an echo yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I don't I know. Mainly just saying, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, I was mainly just saying, if you want to test things out, not talking about like getting echoes, but just, if you want to test things out, I guess maybe their answer to that is, well, you can always just go into the spiral abyss, bird, you know, t- tower of adversity is what they call it. I'm just going to call it the tower. Um, so you can always go into the, or the tower, T-O-A, tower, oh, geez. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you can basically go there, I guess, or you could go, like I said, into the roguelike mode or something. If you just want to test stuff out, maybe that's their solution to that. But like yeah. I said, I still would like more, more over more mobs. Yeah. I think, I think with this, like literally what chaotic is saying too. And I even like, I said, like what further saying as well, it's like, um, it kind of goes into that saying, it's like when like, like you're a jack of all trades, but a, but a master of none. So it's like going to be really important that Kuro finds something that that they make theirs. Like, I think every game we can at least agree, like when we play it, like we can't deny the elemental system and get your impact is a reason why people play that game. Like it, it is just a fact, it, but it is a thing that is unique to that game for what they have made in the genre. And it's like, okay, that sticks out for them. So I think with Kuro, it's like, it go, it does go into those points. It's like, yeah, these other aspects do matter. Like I said, I had a blast with the mini games, but it is like, you want that thing that has, whatever it is that you know is going to be bringing people in, you want that to be hidden consistently across the board. And then you you bring in those extras. Cause uh, even to like Absolutely, what Chaotic was saying dude. was Absolutely. the, uh, what was it the skills? So like there's random, like, you know how like you have like where your grapple hook is and you can use a sensor. Like there are those mention missions where they'll give you a new item and they're like, Hey, try this out. And it's cool, but it's not one of those things. Like you're going to be like, kind of like in some, some games where you get those items and then it's now an item you can just utilize throughout the entire universe. Now uh, it is like specific to those missions. So it's like, 
well, what's the trade off? Is that just like that moment experience or is that, you know, are you are we still looking at like the other aspects, which is what I'm going to be doing 90 percent of the time? And I feel like that also kind of coincides into the illusion realm. Like a lot of people I had watching that was like, whoa, what, like, dude, we need to have this in the like main gameplay like this would be crazy. So it's like that's another thing is like they kind of separated some of the things that they could very well put more together. And not to say that you can't have that exist, like say, like, again, having the buffs and all that crap exists there. But just that being able to have more accessibility and expanding, um, I would say, to further make your characters operate better in combat or whatever it might be that they do. um, I think that that's really important. Now, I wanted to ask you guys this one thing, too, because I had somebody bring it up to me and I didn't really think about it. But you know how, like in Genshin, every character has like a unique quirk to them in exploration. Like you have like Mona who could walk on wonder who can like, float. Yeah. And, like, and, yeah, yeah, okay. like, yeah. Like, would you guys like, like something like that? Because I noticed no. that even HSR does that too. So no, <laughs> no, listen, absolutely not. And I no. love that they don't have that because it's scummy. It is 100%. They literally are just trying. Listen, okay. one of the things I love about weathering waves is the fact that everybody has access to mobility. It's yeah, you not, don't, you don't need it. It's not needed. It's not gate it kept behind never, getting a character. It, it was never something that you focused on in the first place. Like you never got a character because they can move 20% faster at night. Like that's, it's, <laughs> it's not, it, it was yeah, never, it, a, it, it was never a, a prevalent thing. Yeah. Yeah. So like I prefer them not to try to gatekeep that type of stuff behind yeah. a particular character's kit. Personally, I like that everybody has now. Yes. Gian has the dashes. I get it, but that's like, that that's is not skill. like so that's different. No, no, no. That's a skill. skill. Yeah. So like I said, I don't want there to be like this thing where it's just like you feel pressured to have because similar, like I said, the character just diversity in their kit. Like I like I just appreciate the fact that they, we have that mobility base and then everything else is considered extra. I don't want them to just like I just don't like that idea. I really I'm don't. Gonna, hold on. Hold on. I, 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 hold on. I want to I want to I want to tackle this a little bit deeper for a sec cuz I I okay. I want to push back a little and say like I'm actually okay with it to some degree because like for example, Kazuha we're diving in against a little bit here. Kazo has we still have to. allowed him to, to boost him into the air, which then you can use to use for ground slam. You can also utilize that same jump to help you with climbing mountains into different areas. Like, is that scummy that you can do that? That's just his skill that people are leveraging in open world exploration. I would say Yolan falls in that too, where Yolan's open world, well, just her her E is she does the sprint. But the that was the incredibly fun. To, yeah. Is to capture around. Oh, I I open world explore with Yolan all the time. It was my oh favorite. yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, and but also, but if you had Yolan, it basically gave you double sprint because you could sprint or you could uh, use her skill sprint while it recharged. Use her skill again, so you got faster open world exploration. So why but not just give us gadgets? But I'm saying, but I'm saying lock it behind a character. Well, I get I get, saying, we, I get what Connor's trying skill, to say. Yeah, it would take away from her skill. skill. I get, it, yeah, yeah, I get that. Part, it was a part of her kit because she could tether <laughs> mm-hmm. enemies around. It, it was just, it was well, no, innately no, no. within her kit. Yeah, I play it. And like, that's why I said Gian is a different story. It's his skill. I get it. I guess, like I said, I just don't want to get. All those characters are skills. And like, it's mm-hmm. not like, uh, Wanderer, I can see like, hey, there's, he's got some passive stuff. That's, that's, the, that's the argument. Around. That's the argument that I was going to make. Yeah. I've, and that's that's fair. Like uh, there's there's definitely a, an, an elevated degree on that character, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of characters like a freaking Albedo's elevator that you use. Like he's like there's mm-hmm. Chong Lee's pillar. Yeah. Like there there are parts of their kit that people are then leveraging for exploration. Like where it's it's not like a. It's useless, but like Rosaria had the flat passive that you could run faster at night. Mm, like right. that was literally like no other character has this. It's simply just a <laughs> passive thing to help you run faster at night. No or climb. Some people have climbing as well. Well, yeah, like De- Zhao had decreased stamina when climbing walls and stuff. Like, so I understand like there are some of those things, but I'm not necessarily like opposed to it. I, I just don't like the idea of people. Regions. Like, not, like, for example, sorry, just to cap this, like, for example, yeah. Inferno Rider, let's say there was a character that you could ride Inferno Rider's bike, only that character could do it. And like, there was more of a, of a gate, like a dollar value being gate kept there. Like, I can understand a little bit more of the argument, but 
I don't know. I, I, I think you bring bit, up I'm a good point, point though. Why couldn't they just get put that in an echo? Like I said, I guess for me, oh, okay. I just really don't like the idea of gatekeeping these type of mechanics behind characters. So that way the only like there's so many great things about the characters, so many cool things in terms of combat. And now I understand the argument could be, but what if they're diminishing potential unique character kits or something by not doing that? I like I said, echoes are a thing. You can make a really cool echo that does that. I just don't want to it to feel like I think there's so many other things they can add into characters' kits to where it doesn't have to feel like this character is the only way that you can experience um, specifically this movement, mobility, quality of life, something that basically feels like a quality of life update to an actual game. And you've gonna, noticed, and you notice, look, in, um, in Leeway, right? They've been doing this ever since Sumeru because they know that the um, exploration is like lacking. So ever since Sumeru, you got the Vine Whip and then in Fontaine, you know what I'm saying? They added that stuff too. And then in Chinyu Vale, which is a part of Leeway, they gave you that little fish thing because they knew that it's annoying to not be able to move around. And so they added it as a quality of life feature later so that everybody could just kind of zoom around the map now. So that, that's why I'm saying, like, I just like that. Me personally, I'm just not the biggest fan of these mm. qual- things that should just be a quality of life feature being, oh, no, you got to get this five star character to do this. Though. I, I guess I just don't see that line of like what is, quote unquote, just simply a quality of life. versus. I think life. I see the, di- the disconnect. Skill. I see the disconnect here. The disconnect is Connor is saying if it's a part of the skill and you can utilize that as a as a um, as as a better form of mobility. That's not really a big deal. You're saying no life. You're saying that if this thing is locked behind a specific part of their kit, it shouldn't be. Um, if, if this movement is locked behind their kit, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a thing. You should be able to do that regardless if regardless. you have a character or not. But the thing, the thing that's separating the two, right, is Connor saying skill. You're saying a part of the movement. Um, they, these are two completely different things. Like Gian is your example, right? Gian is using his skill in order to get around. Um, Kazuha is using his skill to get around. Um, that's that's the that's the part that's the I, I believe is the disconnect here. I think Wander is more of a better e- example because he actually has a mechanic where he can float, and, and I believe it doesn't even take up your stamina, or he has his own stamina gauge or something. And yeah. it's that is more of an example of something that's being get kept behind a character. And I believe he hasn't even had a rerun yet. So with that being a thing, that's like. Yikes. You, you like, so I think there's a balance here. is my point. Like I, I understand the idea and I'm all down for like, so I think Gian is fine personally. I'm just, I really think it's a, a if there's a balance. And if like, you, I, I can read the word you use egregious, as long as it's not too egregious, I just really don't want them to like make these like crazy things like, Oh, like you can run on water now. Right. <laughs> but only this one character can do it. <laughs> like, I don't want that. I would like make it a, make it like a, Oh, there's an advanced version of a gold puff now. And that echo can glide along the water. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But to rebut that, would you waste premium currency and pull on the character just because they can walk on water? You'd be surprised. (laughs) Maybe I might not, but I'm saying like people people would feel, no, listen, listen. People would 1 million percent feel FOMO. 100% they would feel FOMO. Just just for being able to walk on water? I mean, if once again, you might not feel that way. If there's something you can't get to, like, for example, if there's, if they, and that, I guess, kind of depends on what Kuro does, right? Because if there's things that we start having to where, like, yo, there's something real shiny out there and you know it's, like, something good, like, say you've experienced it on the regular land and then you're like, wait, that's a really good, like, ad or chest or echo out there. And then the next update, they're like, yeah, here's this unit that can just walk all the way over there. And then you have people talking about those different items well, that you can that's obtain. That's scummy. Yeah, no, but that's, but that's how it kind that's of felt egregious. with like certain things. Like, but, but, uh, like, but, there's no, there's there's no Genshin, but that's the thing. If we're, if we're comparing it to Genshin, there's no Genshin character that is able to do that, that prohibits you from getting anything that anybody else can get. No, it's not about prohib- it's not about prohibition. It's about ease of access. So while everybody else basically has to either swim over there or just do like you know the the whatever that character and it's not it's just an example, mind you. It's not like the perfect example, but he's just saying like one character is going to be able to do this thing so much easier than everybody else that 
and that's why I said it almost feels like you're basically locking quality of life stuff behind a character kit. Okay, so that asks no, this I, question. I, I, but I, 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 but sorry, you're going gonna to waste 160 <laughs> Wait, so, gold just so, so what you, you can get to something a little bit quicker. <laughs> I you would be surprised. <laughs> you would be surprised. Okay, so what do you guys well, mean? Oh, for that, for that one person, okay, that would be Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is so unorganized. Chill, chill, chill. Okay, what are you saying further? <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty obvious. I think that if a character innately has, let's say, for example, Yelan, where she's able to sprint so you can get some more dashes so you can explore yeah. faster. Are you just because of that one reason alone is going to make you spend premium currency that you've been saving up just because you want to dash to get the things quicker? It saves time, first of all. Currency just to get a quality of life update like that. Who are you asking, though? I guess that's the question. Because if you're asking me, right, I'm it's asking like in general, I would say the majority of individuals would not do that. I, I, I would dare say 98 percent of people that play the game will not pull Yelan just because she got extra dashes so she can get to that chest five seconds quicker than you. Okay. And, and yeah, I, I think yeah. I think it would be I think it would be more of an issue if it was like a PvP or that, or that, looking that, that chest on the mountain mm. 10 seconds faster than you. <laughs> you're going to you're going to spend that premium currency to do that. No, I think y'all actually triggered further. Chest. Of course, well, I have yeah. nothing. I have a little. Nothing I, I did. I did because I feel like this is a ridiculous topic. Just <laughs> being honest. Yeah, they got Aaron. I think I actually triggered him a little bit. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, it bleeds into other things. It does make sense, though. It does make sense. Well, it, 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 I just never heard him bass in his voice like that. <laughs> no, just yeah, something I was going to oh, like, say, combat, in what I'm, way does it make sorry. sense? <laughs> oh, no, 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 sorry. I mean, I mean, the character. No, I'm 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 agreeing with you further that like uh, it makes sense because like if you're going to extend that argument of like well that's not fair because now this character has a slight advantage to their kit mm -hmm. like that's a structure of gotcha games because like we've already acknowledged earlier that Gian is just a like a fairly busted five star unit with his CC ability his AOE coverage AOE damage and single target damage yep. yes you have to pay premium and it's like yeah you're paying for a quality of life feature and getting a more powerful unit by spending that right. currency so yeah, having certain characters that have some degree of an advantage and twine into their kit is not necessarily mm -hmm. like just like an off the table component. And I think leveraging skills in a creative way in open world exploration that, yeah, you put the money into this character, you get a slight advantage. Of yeah. this the is only, like totally the only fair. way I see this argument making sense is with Zox's example, where if there's something out there that you need a specific character to get yeah. to it for mm -hmm. and, and it's valuable, then of course that makes sense. Then yeah, yeah, you but but once again, that's a scummy practice, and Kuro wouldn't do that because then there would be you know how much backlash there would be. But yeah, 100%. if you're telling yeah. me you you pulled uh Zhao just because his stamina lasts longer for climbing up a wall, to me that just doesn't make any sense. And I think that's why I got so animated because for me that's uh -huh. ridiculous. So let me say this then. Let me just say this: two things. Um, first of all, I've seen that happen. I've hundred percent seen people say yeah, that. Yeah, but, but I'm, not it, I'm, yeah, I'm, not further, I'm not saying further, it. Yeah, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it doesn't further, happen. Further, 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 further. Let him finish his thought. Let him finish what? his thought. Well, well, it's just is misrepresenting what I was saying. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. What uh -huh. I'm saying is that that's a, a ridiculous reason why to pull that character. I mean, fair enough. That might be fair enough. But some people would say they don't think it's ridiculous. That's all. All the point that I'm making is this: um, people hundred percent have done that. They just have right? whether we think it makes sense or whether it's a good use of, of value uh, acquisition. It happens is my point. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the other thing to consider is this. That's just one example, right? But when you do that for multiple characters, it's like, OK, that's one quality of life thing. But then we have the person who can dash faster, the person who can um, fly faster, the person who can climb faster. It's like when they start kind of adding up. And like I said, I, I don't think you have a, I think you have a good point. You know, Connor, it's like, yeah, technically value acquisition is something that happens where it's like, you do want to beat the thing faster. You do. I totally get it. It's just like I said, and then this, this has been my thing this whole time. I think when they start kind of adding up and it's just like, you need this character so you can do this faster, this character. Cause at the end of the day, gotcha games are kind of centered around time management. That's why they have you doing the dailies. That's why they have you coming, logging in each day. And so when your whole system is built around, you know, time and, you know, like, oh, man, I wish I could farm faster. I wish I could do this faster. I do. Like people put a lot of value 
into being able to do certain things faster. And so when you're putting like the the climbing, the running, the gliding, like it starts to add up and you start to kind of feel just like, oh my gosh, I now I, like I, this person was able to do all these things so much faster. And like I said, one thing by itself might not, and like I said, for some people it is just one thing, but yeah. one thing by itself might not push the needle. But when you start adding all these different, and like I said, to Coro's credit, they haven't done this yet. Mm. Um, and so, and hopefully they don't, but I'm just saying that does become like a, a tad bit of an annoyance um, when it kind of gets to that point. I see what you're saying there, but like with respect, that's kind of gotcha games. I was like, going to, I was waiting for this to end of, to say this. Of, of it's, it's pay for convenience. Like as, as much as like, you know, not every, mm-hmm. everyone's got their own feelings about gotcha games. We don't need to go down that whole route, but like mm-hmm. it's that, that a hundred, like it's the same reason why people do dailies to get the farm up the currency daily. So they don't drop $150 on a new character. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's the same thing. Like if you're valuing your time and you're valuing your money in the same way, like you are still spending something to do it. So if somebody chooses to spend a hundred dollars to get a character so they can run around per, a few percentage points faster <laughs> because they're willing to drop that cash to do so. Like that's, that's the business model. Yeah, like, it, with, I mean, hey, like, dude, that sounds like, so, so ridiculous the way you just put it. <laughs> bro, it, 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 like, it does, but that's the thing like, bro, chaotic can say this. I, I'm pretty sure further. How long have you been doing content, bro? Because like, I'm telling you the things that you'll see over the years. Like, I personally wouldn't be that guy. I'm like, dude, yeah, I don't yeah, care. Like, I'm getting I'm getting to point A to point B. I'm there. Like, OK. And that's always been my mentality. Like, that's kind of it is true to what Connor's saying. Most games are structured that way. It's like, well, you cleared it in, say, 20 seconds, but I cleared it in three minutes. But in my head, I'm like a clear is a clear. Right. It's like, yeah, yeah of, course, of course, we're still getting the same resources. So it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But I also get that part of those those. It, it is like as much as I, I hate it personally, there are those dudes that's like, <laughs> hey, how does he get to do that? And it's just like, yeah. I feel like it goes into that acquisition of those like abilities and like what you're paying for. It is kind of the concept where I've had people tell me like, yeah, man. I think as a free to play, I should be running hands with the guy that just dropped twenty thousand dollars on the game, and it's like, yeah, no, no shit. of course. <laughs> Can not. I say yeah. no, something? You should, you really quick? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey! Don't forget, don't forget the people. Hey, but I'm doing it more optimally. Oh my god! <laughs> I love don't, don't forget those. I was gonna say that, like, since we're like on the topic of like you know spending money, the only way I would spend money. Uh, on on Wuthering Ways and feel good about it because I know that they're probably going to do a good job at it if they implement this is I'll only not for a quality of life feature but if they implement skins on a character that changes their gameplay I am 100% going to spend money you mean okay. the visuals of their gameplay, yeah, right? Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Yeah. And it doesn't change anything. There's no advantage to it. Same damage, no matter what. That is something I'm looking forward to, hoping, mm. just based off the mm. PGR skins that changes Have you everything. seen their PGR yeah, skins? Yeah, I mean, it's insane, beautiful. bro. It's oh, so one, good. One, one, Coming one Bianca last, Stigmata skin is yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. good. Sorry, yeah. One, yeah. One, last, one last thing before, before we tie this all up, and, and it's the last thing that I just want to put on this, is that... If let's say, for example, Kuro comes out with a Wuthering Waves character that um, is is able to have their stamina sprinting. Oh, well, there's no stamina sprinting. There's no Jeez. sprinting. That's, Thank yeah, God. That's a, that's a bad one. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think <laughs> in, if, if, in if they're able to Thursday, glide, though. if they're able to glide 20 percent, is gliding stamina, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 okay, it's right, forever. Right. It feels like forever, though. Honestly, it, it, yeah, they, it's glide just so 20% great. Longer. I'm just trying to use an example. If they're if they're trying yeah. if they can glide 20 percent longer, and that's just innately built into their kit, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. I, I feel confident saying that 98 percent of the people will see that and say that's cool. But what's the rest of what that character is doing? You know, that's that's mm-hmm. the more important part. Yeah. And I and I feel like that's going to be for most individuals that that two percent or that one and a half percent that says I'm pulling 150 pulls for that character because they can glide 20 percent longer. <laughs> I mean, I know they're there. I know they exist, but I just don't feel like that's that's the majority. And that's that's all I was just yeah. trying to say is that. Yeah. It's it's the, it, it's it's what the character can do as the entirety of their kit in terms of combat and and what they yeah, bring to the table. Course. The the twenty percent gliding is just a that is a cool feature that yeah nice bonus the character I, has yeah a I nice think the bonus. agreed there upon I think the agreed upon barrier that we all we all agree 
that should like shouldn't be crossed is you cannot do something because you don't have this character. Exactly. Meaning like area accessibility or like an achievement or something. Like you 100%. cannot do this without the character. Versus yeah, like, oh, this character might make this a little bit easier. Yeah. I think I think that's I think we all agree that's definitely like a boundary that should and the be point that I was making, because the question that mind you, I was doing it based on the question that was asked. Would you like this in the game? And I just personally am saying I would not. Whether they add it is going to be whatever they add it. I just appreciate that they've done such a good job at making the mobility, specifically the mobility, mind you. Agreed. We haven't even talked about like, oh, maybe you can craft better or something like that, right? Like we haven't even talked. I'm just saying specifically in terms of mobility, I appreciate the fact that the the barrier to mobility, unlike, for example, in Genshin, where there is a lot of barriers to mobility, this mm -hmm. game currently everybody has access to so many features that just making this gigantic world that they made accessible. And I appreciate that. So good on you, Coral, for that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, to be, to be 100% honest with you, I even if they did add that into the game, I don't think it would even make that big of a difference because there's right. just so much mobility already baked into it. Yeah. You know? yeah, that's what I had to ask a lot of people is like, dude, like even with the crownless thing, right? Like, because so pe so many people are going so hard about it and I'm like, okay, I get that. Like, yeah, I absolutely agree. Like that can change. Right. But if I ask you this question, if they don't, if they were to say have kept the crownless scene the same, would you not play the game? Like, you yeah, know, like, is that enough to make you, you know, so it kind of goes into like those concepts is like, well, if they do add that, are you just going to not play the game? Like, does that take away so much from the game itself that you don't mm. enjoy it anymore? And so right. like, I think it's also those things too, like where you have to start asking yourself as a player, like, what do I really value? Like, do I care that that guy is on his account and not even in my world over there gliding for 20% longer? Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, like, yeah. probably not. Cause like, I'm not <laughs> racist. Like true. if it was, if yeah. it was like, and I think the only time those things would kind of matter is because in these types of games, what they could, what we could see happen is maybe PVE leaderboards. And if there's any sort of time trial thing that's oriented, like where there's like some crazy rewards, attached to like a gliding event and then there's that dude that can yeah, glide like there's, there's, Bro, one okay, more, there's one thing i wanted to bring up and if if we can just at least talk about this because uh and, and before i even say this i'm definitely not trying to bash any creators i just want to bring this up and see what you guys think about this i'm gonna read this tweet um my biggest problem with weathering waves so far is the fact that the parry ability is just a normal attack. In my opinion, it 100% should be a separate button you hit and a separate separate button you hit and time ha and half of the time I think he meant to say uh, you're already mid attack. You should just spam normal attacks against certain enemies. I have a very specific opinion on on this. I think this. Um, I don't think it should be a different button. I think the, uh -uh. this clearly speaks into the difference between spamming your abilities and not paying attention to the rotations of the enemies and mm. the uh, because there's there, there, there's abilities and the way that they've made things is deliberate. They want you to be watching what the enemy's doing and how to counter this or you get punished like it, it's 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 that this is not a. a, a just yeah. go in and just clap all the buttons. What what do you th guys think on that? The you monkey go with boss is a perfect example, bro. The monkey boss is like, so there's a couple of things you have to be mindful of, and especially in the hologram where you start fighting the harder bosses. He has mm -hmm. a phase where he, um, you know, he does the ground swings and stuff like that. And he has his opening where he reaches his arms up and you see the circle appear. Mm -hmm. And it's like the window of time that you have to hit him. It like it's kind of weird because you're like, OK, do I hit him right now or do I wait? It's just all pure timing. So as soon as you get that, it's like great. Right. But if you miss that open window, oh, you're in his hands and he's one tapping you like that's that's just what happens. And it's, so it's like it's a high risk move because the time for the window for you to hit is so like. It's kind of specific. Small. specific. It's very yeah. small. So it's like, but if you get it, it's a high reward because again, then the next thing he does, he has a pillar. He spins in a circle. And then there's this attack speed that he starts gaining with every rotation. So as you're dodging, you can't just spam your dodge, right? You have to actually pay attention to each time and each time you have to time it perfectly. So just into that concept of that being a separate button and the parry not being significant enough, I think the big issue with parrying 
in just in general is kind of the feel of combat is the impact, right? I think that that's the main thing that we all have experienced in CBT one that we kind of want to see back. But I feel like if you start going and adding extra buttons for parrying and all that other stuff, it's going to make the game like it's already certain levels of complexity once we actually really started diving into the game. So it's like, how much more complex do you want the game to be? Like, we're not playing like with one of those mouses that have all your fingers in them. And then you need to have your, your parry. It's a mobile game too. Yeah, yeah, it's a mobile, mobile exactly. Game. Like, yeah, like, and that's what people don't get. And I had to bring that point up too. It's like, dude, there's probably going to be like 70% of the player base playing on mobile. And then you want to add a different button for, for parrying on the other screen, on the side of the screen. There's already not enough room for the buttons as is. So then you're going to add a parry button too. So yeah, I just feel like with that, that, that could maybe be personal preference and there's nothing wrong with that, but I don't think that that's going to necessarily fit the entirety of the player base and like how they Again, there's like the standard thing that Connor brought up earlier that industries will stick to certain things because people have already have, have become accustomed to the comforts of that. So why would you change something when these types of games are played a certain way for people to look at it and like, ah, I really didn't like it like that because I played this game and the controls are binded this way. So it's like, you know, those are the things I think that you have to kind of consider with those things, you know? I, I also no think it would be, huh? I was saying, I was no life next type thing. Oh, okay. Um, I also think that it would be actually make not even just com complexity in terms of button. Yes, but it would actually make the game far easier. That would make the game far easier because the reality is similar to what Kyle was just saying. If you're playing like, for example, when I play Ling Yang, I have to be very careful. Like if you're playing a gauntlet character, um, like sword characters are very easy because they have extended hit boxes, hurt boxes. Uh, prolonged hurt boxes specifically. Gian has the same thing to where you hit that thing out, it actually stays out there for a couple seconds and you can get the parry easier. Versus if you're a person who has like a bunch of quick attacks, you have to be very mindful of when you attack because if you get caught up in an attack string, you won't have time to do the parry because you'll still be in the attack string. If you gave them a parry button, you could just spam the attack the entire time. And when you see that gold button, you just hit parry. Like it actually takes a lot of the um the timing out of the equation. Yeah. If you can yeah. just hit parry button every time you see the gold thing versus being careful. Same with Tao Chi, right? Like because Tao Chi is a great sword user, her attacks are slower. You kind of have to be careful and mindful of the timing when you're attacking. If you could just hit a parry button, you're just like, oh, I'm bringing it over. Oh, wait, it's too late. Let me just hit the parry button real quick. And then it's just basically easy mode. So I don't, I think that would actually not be a good idea for Wait both for the, the mobile as well as the fact that, like I said, um, different characters, it's a, it's considered cool, for example. Um, I know when Further was on the last time, we were talking about how hard it was to parry with Encore, Anka at the time. And like, is she still I, hard to parry with? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so cool though when you I do it. it. And so it's just like, it would be so much easier to just hit a parry button. But you can actually have a lot of skill expression when you can be mindful of the timing. I saw some people, what they did with Tao Chi was they used the grappling hook. And so for with Thunder Squama, they would grapple hook up and then boom, down. And they would use that to time with Tao Chi because it was harder sometimes with their slow swings. So it's just like a parry button would remove all of that, basically, is my mm -hmm. point. It would remove the need. And like I said, I think the biggest uh, argument is the fact that the mobile... Um, the mobile issue, like there's just a bunch of stuff added you to it. You just helped me solve something that I was trying to figure <laughs> out in the fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're welcome. No worries, bro. <laughs> Everybody come here and learn strats. No, go ahead further. My phone, man. No, no, no. I just, I had a quick question and, and this is more for uh, Connor because he's a PGR resident here. Um, <laughs> as Wuthering Waves continues, um, you know, with PGR and correct me if I'm mistaken, Connor, um, there's, Gen 1 units, they consider, and then like Gen 2 units. And the Gen 2 units, what separates them, once again, correct me if I'm wrong, is that they have these uh, abilities or like core passives that allows them to do things that Gen 1 units can do. For example, like auto dodging. Could you see Wuthering Waves introducing characters down the road that can maybe like auto parry or auto dodge that that would separate them from the characters that we have now, in a sense? 
Yeah. I, uh, okay. Two things. So I'll answer the first question about the, the Perry mechanic and then I'll, I'll jump into that one. Okay. Um, I, I actually, it's funny. I was thinking the mobile side in terms of the UI actually is the easiest part to solve there where all you would do is that like that gold ring that appears on the character already. Quick time of it. That intera- you make that interactive like a quick time. Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's like a timing. So actually on mobile, it's the easiest to solve in my opinion. Mm, <laughs> um, wanting to do that. But I, but I still agree with everything that's already been said. I think it just gets away from what they want the game to be, where they want you to not just go in and spam, 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 spam. Okay. Enemy dead. They want you to think about it. They want you to be calculated. They want you to time. And I want to keep that being the kind of combat that's in the game. So yes, I agree with keeping it on either the basic or heavy attack. We already talked earlier that actually enemies need to be parried in different ways. So uh, like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally fine with parry system currently how it is. Uh, so it can be summed up in two words, skill issue, get over it. Um, ah, going ah. into the feedback, <laughs> <laughs> um, going into the feedback on the kits, 100%, I could see them incorporating something like that. Like, especially right now, we're ta- we're in CBT2, we're looking at their Gen 1 units, like their, yep. their first iteration of it. Right. Uh, Genshin, Genshin fell into this too. Like Ayaka was a character that was designed during their closed beta testing that was a introduced later and you can feel the difference in her kit to some of the other later introduced characters you're going to see a certain level of i think simplicity and comfortability in the initial characters that come out that is going to get people more acquainted to the game and then as yeah the game slowly increases in complexity in terms of crazy enemy types and their gameplay types yeah we're going to see some of those other things come into play i actually think a hundred percent i could see a unit now that you've mentioned it um like tau charity has the ability to um quote unquote parry with her hold attack on that uh, uh, where you hold the charge and then deflects it. And it can already like have that auto parry mechanic. I could totally see there being a five star character that has a five star version of that, that basically like you hold it and it basically does a perfect parry for you. Maybe it's a skill. Maybe like that is like their parry button um, that it's like they do that. I could totally see them incorporating that onto a character. I don't think that's beyond that. Where somebody asked me this on stream, I don't think they'll go and I would be shocked if they did. Um, Right now in PGR, especially on the Gen 2 units, they started moving into signature sets of like their artifact system where like when a new character comes, a new set comes out with it and that memory set is specifically for that character. Like you don't use these memories on literally anybody else. They're only for that. I don't think Weathering Waves will ever go that direction with it. I think they'll probably stick to more generalized memory or uh, echo sets will probably get a little bit more echo diversity eventually in terms of the kinds of sets that are there but i think they'll stay generalized i don't think there's going to be like a yinling echo set or or something Mm -hmm. along those lines so connor i'm wondering since the weapons are based are guaranteed right do you think that they would add something to weapons that would give like a different ability because essentially the weapons are much easier to get so you, yeah, there might not be a specified artifact set that's just for that character. I mean, technically, yes, signature weapons are in essence specifically for that character, but because of the ease of access by you know by comparison to other games where the, the weapon is always going to be guaranteed, do you think that would maybe cause them to? And I actually haven't read Gian's signature weapon to see what it like does, but do you think it's possible that they might make it to where the weapons? kind of get like something maybe in the future i don't know but get like a special oomph to them besides just the normal stats and maybe one passive do you think that's I, even a possibility I, I because of these access i i don't think kind of making sure we're not going into our previous conversation i don't think it will be like to the degree of like you get a whole different skill uh-huh. to it but i do think the weapons will be significant power spikes like yeah. especially in the gen 2 units that came in like pgr the every signature weapon that came out with them they started to be looked at as like, you need their weapon. Now, mm. fortunately, PGR is generous enough and in a position where like, you pretty much can get a character, the signature weapon or their pet, like every two patches. So like mm. most people didn't really complain about it. Um, but in a, in the direction, it seems they're going with this gotcha and you're probably going to have to be a little more picking and choosing. Um, I think we'll start to see weapons that will greatly elevate character kits probably i think that's a fairly fair bet however again how the game is designed i don't think it will ever be make or break on a i character. agree unless you're getting like into the, again like the super sweaty hardcore territory but again the fact that there's no pvp game modes of any kind as of right now in terms of like score attacks or uh, a literal pvp like none of that exists 
it, it kind of is, it's an irrelevant question for me. Mm-hmm. As long as there's a player versus player combat and it's pay for convenience, I don't mind it saying in that realm. I wanted to, gotcha. I wanted to answer Chaotic's question really quick. That, that question, okay. just really quick. Yeah. I was going to say, just get good skill <laughs> issue. <laughs> Literally, that's Let's what it go. is, bro. If you can't memorize a boss's patterns, don't play the I game, feel like dude. I, start, I feel like I started something. No, yes. bro. Like, dude, no. I don't. I don't. I don't. Loba, want that. are you gatekeeping right now? No, I don't want that. I don't want that, bro. Play, play the other yeah, game, dude. Him. Play the other game. I do oh not. God. I'm so sorry. I got triggered on that because that like really bothered me. Because if it if you don't like that, don't play the game. Simple as that. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, dude, oh. and, we're going to have so many people talking about this game, and they're going to put it in, in a bad light. I'm defending Wuthering Waves here 100%. It needs to say the same. You just have to time the attack, bro. It's easy. Just time it. If you well, don't no, time no, no, it correctly, no, I, you it's might. It's not necessarily that it's easy, but it's it is not, learnable. It's not. No, well, the thing is, there, it's learnable. I think from the concept, the concept is easy. Is yeah, what yeah, 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 but I think the, I, I don't, I think. Oh my God! Tell, I, I see it in your I see it in your face, Loba. Yeah, yeah, just, just think about sure. it before you. No, say, no, no, no. Yeah, I think I think the reason why and I, I've seen a lot of people complain about this at the beginning of the game for Weathering Ways and CPT two. Everyone's saying it's easy. It's easy now because you're at a low level, low world level. Everything is really easy to parry. Don't judge it too soon. You need to get to the end part first. So I think people are judging it too early. Um, Ooh, pairing is, is very is. easy at the beginning. It is very easy, but I'm already getting, I'm at level 27. I'm already doing Look the, Loba. it's insane. It's just, it's getting and, and harder. This, this is, this is, this is why, and, and we can, uh, we can shut after this if you yeah, want. I'm so, sorry. I got tricked. Um, that literally bothered me a lot. Like the, I, I don't, I don't want it to change. Like it needs to stay the way it is. It's perfect. Agreed. The, the beginning of the game sets the tone. This is why I said the crownless fight needs to be the same mm-hmm. as the last the last beta it it, it it when you get clapped at the beginning of the game it tells you oh i actually have to learn some stuff mm-hmm. yeah it, it, this ain't gonna be just let's press uh attack attack skill switch characters attack attack skill switch characters attack attack skill rotation like it's it it it, it requires you knowing what they're doing yeah yeah and um, sorry, if and, I, and, I'm sorry I, if I got I got a little out of hand there, but man, no, that topic fine, is like I'm so sensitive about it, man. Unhinged you know? Loba, yeah, man. Like <laughs> he oh lost my God. it there for a second, yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> Reel him back in. <laughs> I'm, good, I'm good now. I had to let that out, but then no, you're good, bro. You're good. <laughs> um, so yeah, I agree. I mean, I would have. I think that would not be a bad thing, chaotic. Um, I would just say if you lose the fight, just keep the story moving. I uh, don't like force people to have to beat the fight to continue the story. And so, yeah, I would say, oh, my gosh. So I just I just, I just made everyone toxic. Holy crap. <laughs> no, it's yeah. OK, bro. It's OK. <laughs> as long as we can come together at the end, as long as we can come together at the end, it is totally oh, fine. Is. Toxic? Um, what do you mean? What's toxic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, um, let's get this show on the road. I appreciate everybody who has come through. Thank you to all the guests who have come on today. Uh, and specifically, thank you so much, Chaotic. Thank you so much further for coming back. Apparently, we didn't scare you, so that's a good thing. Um, thank you, like I said. Thank you guys so much. So I'll just give you guys an opportunity to, uh, we can start with you further and then Chaotic. I'm just going to say maybe your like, last little bit, whatever you want to say, shout out your channel, so forth and so on. I'm just going to say Unhinged Loba scared me a little bit. <laughs> so I might be, you know, question will come back on. Uh, also, Gosh. for those, if they keep Crownless the same, uh, for those that missed out on CBT1, uh, you know, prayers up for you. That's unfortunate. Um, but no, it, it, it was good to be on. Thank you guys so much. It's, it's always a pleasure. I always have so much fun talking about these topics because once again, y- you don't really get to do this on a regular basis. So to be able to come on a podcast with a bunch of cool dudes and be able to talk about a game that we all really enjoy and want to see be successful uh, and do really well is it's always a good time. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> and then this guy, of course, uh, but no, thank you. I appreciate it. I would love to come back on as always. You just let me know and uh, I'll, I'll be there. No problem. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, my name's chaotic mobile games, anime, that stuff. We're out.
<laughs> awesome. And that wraps up this lovely episode of the Rovercast. Like I said, thank you guys so much. Uh, you know, life here. Uh, you can follow all the things. All the They'll be in the description. Awesome, <clears throat> thanks. And uh, yeah, we appreciate you. And I'll uh, like let the other guys kind of say their quick uh, shout outs. Zox, go for it. Connor, right, go right. it. Yeah, hey, listen, listen, man. You know, I'm not shy to talk. But hey, guys, it's Zox, man. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys let us know what you guys thought about each portion of this podcast. And like, who who you vibing with? Like, just, just go ahead and say, like, you know, if you don't want us to have somebody back on here, say like, yo, I don't even want Zox back on the podcast no more. Just don't have him on here. Let us know in the comment section, all right? But yeah, you guys can check me out at Zox is Killing Woolen, man. Um, obviously, we're streaming every day. So if you're interested, Come on through, man. Oh, I'm uh, Loba. Connor Loba. Oh, I was gonna say uh, Loba here. You know, I'm a very passionate guy, as you can see <laughs> when I talk, and uh, sometimes I get a little unhinged. But I'm still, got, I'm still a good guy. I'm still looking. I'm still always trying to be on the positive side. You know what I'm saying? Not toxic here. <laughs> I see the veins in your head. You scared? <laughs> but yeah, uh, not my, co- not my comfy streamer Loba. He would never. <laughs> love the feedback from all the community definitely comment down below subscribe all that stuff let us know what you guys think about the episode uh did you check me out on twitch youtube tiktoks all that good stuff and yeah thank you awesome yeah and uh yeah like we said at the beginning connor's thoughts connor's thoughts on youtube and uh sorry if i got a little bit heated there i know i was getting a little bit passionate uh, about what we're talking about like of course we want to be very <laughs> opening open <laughs> accepting all people of all skill levels here Respect God jokes for days. <laughs> <laughs> I, look everyone everyone's welcome obviously like okay look, 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 look. Uh, I'll, I'll put the memes aside <laughs> sorry i couldn't help myself i I look as as somebody with skill issues. I, I I'm, I'm lumping myself in there. I'm still garbage at pairing. I got a lot of work to do. Okay. Um, no, honestly, I still love hearing all the feedback. Even hearing that tweet, like I still want people to vocalize things like that, so we can talk about it. Like so we can and talk about why we agree or disagree on those things. I'm not trying to shut that person down, and like I don't want them just like shut up and be a dick about it. I want to talk about it. I may feel differently about it, but that's okay. So uh, again, I love having the conversation here. I know we got a little bit heated. It turned into a little bit of like a, kind of a 2v2, 2v1. I think further and I got kind of on the same page there. We were felt yeah. like we might've been going in. We're all good here. Just in case anybody's thinking anything's bad. Got a little all passionate, good that's all. It got a little passionate, that's okay. Nah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little doc there for a minute. Like next stream, we get to see them all fight. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that, but that's all. I just want to say thank you all again for coming out. Uh, at Connor's thoughts on YouTube, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Twitch, yeah, Instagram, all the crap. All, all the all things. Stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So, like I said, make sure follow all these lovely people here. Um, I know a lot of us are going to be streaming uh, whether it waves in the coming weeks. So feel free to kind of hop in between, you know, uh, our chats, you know, say hi to us. We appreciate it. Um, yeah. So without further ado. Until next time, peace. Darkness. <laughs>